Welcome back to Power Play. It's time for our Tuesday MPs. You know them all, of course. Conservative MP James Rajat from Edmonton. NDP Deputy Leader uh, Megan Leslie from Halifax. Roger Kuzner, the Liberal from Cape Breton. Welcome to you all. What did you think of question period today? We had Thomas Mulcair's view. I'm wondering what the Conservatives took away. Did you like the way it unfolded, particularly between the three leaders off the top? Actually, just in terms of style, I like it where it's a simpler question and a, and a very uh, simple answer back and forth. I think that's actually probably a model we could use. I, I did think the questions were very direct, and I thought the Prime Minister was very direct in the sense of he learned about it on, uh, on May the 15th. That's when he did learn about uh, the $90,000 personal check from Nigel Wright to Mike Duffy. So I, th I think it was actually a good exchange, and I think Canadians uh, should observe that and see exactly what, who knew what when. Roger, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, sound and fury, not a whole lot of enlightenment in terms of new information. What was your takeaway from that? I thought it was good to have the Prime Minister in the House not answering questions rather than a, a, an appointed minister in the House not answering questions for him. Uh, but uh, I, I like the tone. I, both uh, uh, Mulcair and uh, I thought uh, jo uh, Justin did a, a good job as well, you know, a little bit different in styles. But uh, uh, I, I thought the uh, uh, questions were good, the answers not all that enlightening, as you had said. Megan. I mean, I had your leader on. Everyone seems to think he did pretty well, yeah. except for maybe James Rajat. But <laughs> I mean, it was a very different question period because it, it was. there was no theatrics, really. Yeah. It was like, as I said, off the top of a courtroom. And that experience. Yeah, no, Tom Mulcair stood up. Um, if people watch question period every day. They, they know usually the leader takes the first three questions and then we move on to other MPs. But Tom took the first five NDP spots and then he continued through the second round. And he just had these very pointed questions. Why? Because we actually are looking for answers here. This isn't about theatrics. This isn't about grandstanding. This is about Prime Minister Harper, what did you know and when? We have waited days for answers. He has not been in the House. He finally shows up and we still didn't get any answers, even though those were really pointed and direct questions. I think the Prime Minister failed on this one. But his answers in the House are exactly the same as he gave uh, last week, which is he learned on uh, Wednesday, May the 15th. Um, in terms of the personal payment, that's when he learned. He was under the impression that Senator Duffy had paid back the money himself, the $90,000 in question. Uh, it was Nigel Wright's decision to make that in terms of personal decision. Uh, Thomas Mulcair asked about the Prime Minister's office making a payment. The Prime Minister was very clear that the Prime Minister's office, or himself, or his office, the taxpayers did not in any way contribute to that repayment. His answers were so very the answers clear, were but very they weren't clear. answers to the questions that were being asked. Has this been discussed at Cabinet? Uh, when was this discussed with Marjorie Le Breton? Has he seen the check? I mean, we actually want to know more than the five-second soundbite that the Prime Minister is giving us, and he's not answering those questions. What struck me, though, and I don't want to... Uh, I will compare it. It's almost like the missing gap on the Watergate tapes. There's the time from when he learned about the Nigel Wright payment to the time where he, and, and called it an honorable gesture, to the time where he gassed him and said it's, it's, it's unacceptable. It seems to me that somewhere in those three or four days, something what, happened what, to what change happened? his mind. What do you think it could be? Well, but I mean, it's a very tough decision for, I mean, Nigel Wright, like people ask about him as an individual my view, he's an exemplary individual. He's outstanding in terms of intelligence, in terms of personal integrity, yeah. but he, he had a serious error of judgment on this part here. And I think it's, it's very tough for a Prime Minister who relies so much on a Chief of Staff, someone like Nigel. Uh, first of all, I think he was probably incredulous and said, you know, why did you do this, Nigel? But secondly, to accept sort of your right-hand person uh, to have to leave at that point, it's very difficult. So I'm sure it was very personally difficult for the I Prime Minister, but I mean, he was very clear in terms of when he learned about it. And Nigel, to his credit, took full responsibility for it. But you know, the, the fact remains, and, and I, again, I, I thought uh, Mulcair did a good job. I thought Justin did a real good job, exactly on your point about sort of putting the chronology together and you know trying to connect the dots with wh why this lapse of judgment in dealing with, with the bad decision that Nigel Wright ended up making, and not a poor decision, potentially criminal decision. Okay, L like this was. Everybody in, that pays attention to politics in this country was watching the, the, the Duffy fiasco, the, the, you know, that whole thing around the expenses in the, in the Senate. Everybody was watching it, all eyes on it. So to think that you could write a check and influence the outcome of, a, of an investigation, uh, it, it, like, it is criminal, I'm sure. And uh, so it, it's not just a bad, it's not a whoops, it's a, hey, 
Wow. I'm in trouble. How's your law degree doing, by the way? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know the ones that I've broken, and that's not one. <laughs> Jane, were you going to say something? No, but it's not. I mean, there was a personal check given from Nigel to Senator Duffy to cover the expenses. That was, you know, it's clearly wrong. But, it, you know, to it's jump to, to jump, to jump from there, Roger, I think you're jumping to conclusions that you don't have any substantial for. But I mean, there is a, a section in the code, the criminal code, that says that that is illegal. Your law degree is okay. Let's, let's actually, law let's, let's actually okay. let the ethics commissioner investigate this, get all the facts in, which Nigel himself is, he'll be fully responsible for and responsible to, and let's, them, let's let her and her office make a determination. I think people are still fascinated by what went from honorable to unacceptable. Yeah. I mean, that mm -hmm. took days for, that, for the PMO to morph from one to the other, and the prime minister didn't add that any light and light on that one today and I'm just still confused that's the biggest mystery as far as I can see there is Does anyone else there, get well there is this big, there that? is this big gap absolutely and you know the Prime Minister stands up and, and this government stands up and they say you know we're an accountable government and accountability act and accountability tell us what happened just tell us what happened I mean James is right tough decision for the Prime Minister to say, hey, Chief of Staff, you're going to have to go. Absolutely a tough decision. But then James said, I think the Prime Minister must have been incredulous. Well, was he? We don't know. Come forward, Prime Minister Harper, and tell us what happened. If you want to be accountable, if you want to actually live up to the words that you're saying, tell us what happened. And he refuses. But, but his response to journalists last week, the Prime Minister said very clearly, he's been through the whole gamut of emotions here. So, I mean, he was very open about that. In terms of he was angry, he was frustrated, he was disappointed. I mean, obviously, you know, someone you rely on so much in terms of your chief of staff, someone you have the highest amount of uh, respect for, and uh, I'm pretty dis I'm pretty know. tired of hearing about conservatives being disappointed in this experience. Like, <laughs> let's concerned. actually just I'm find concerned. out what happened. Roger, fine, but let's let I mean, let's cooperate with the ethics commissioner. Let's ensure that the full investigation is done. In terms of any uh, Senate expenses, I mean, obviously those monies should be paid back, and they should be paid back by the center. I mean, in terms of people writing me and saying this is what should happen, I agree with them completely on those points. Roger, I mean, is this going to be beating your head against the wall and getting the same answers from the prime minister tomorrow? And then I guess he's off the rest of the week. But it sounds to me like his story is defensible in the sense he didn't know. Um, and he's not going to change his change the tone of it at all. Well, you know, I, I, I'm quite certain that we'll continue to, to to beat on it because you know Canadians want to ask these want, want these questions answered. They don't want to just ask them; they want them answered. And uh, uh, I, I think he's been evasive. You, you know, just to say that you're clear, you're not being clear. I thought there were direct questions put to him today, and he continued to just sort of step back and say, you know, you think I've it's been sustainable. Clear. Can this, you know? Keep this pressure up. It's. Uh, I mean, are you going to run out of gas pretty quickly? Well, we know that the prime minister can be really stubborn on these things, and he will put his head down and keep going. But we also know that you know he doesn't listen to science, he doesn't listen to evidence, but he does listen to the court of public opinion. And I think that if enough people keep saying no, we want answers here, I think we might get some. Very quickly, it's uh, thanks to the conservatives and the liberals. Uh, the Senate committee is now opening its doors to the public. It'll look at this uh, thing, uh, and actually, we're going to be uh, talking to one of the members of the internal uh, board of internal economy in about two seconds but anyway Which so how it should be that's why it's, yeah. it's going to be let, interesting let to see what happens. See it's exactly happening right now as i understand it so we'll yes. see what happens speaking of that when we return we do have a member